The goddess is alive. Magic is afoot. The goddess is alive. Magic is afoot. What the goddess means to me is wholeness and peace. The goddess means to me my internal strength. She has come to me and shown me the beauty that is within myself. The goddess is my voice. She is my self-empowerment. She's my self-respect. As a result, my life has really undergone some major transformations, not only creatively, um, but in the pathway that I have now started to take. And I have, uh, I have the works of Z Budapest to thank for that. The goddess is alive. Magic is afoot. The goddess is alive. Magic is afoot. The goddess is alive. Magic is afoot. The goddess is alive. The women's movement today is being called the women's spirituality movement in great part. And that's because it's not just concentrating on areas of social and political reform, but it's looking hard and fast at spiritual reform. Women are gathering today in circles just as their 1960 counterparts did in consciousness raising circles. But now they're not just knocking down that door to a man's world asking for entrance. Instead, they're looking at the myths, spiritual beliefs, religions, values, everything that runs our culture, everything that feeds our souls. We're going to take a look at the women's spirituality movement, as it's been called, by the women participating in it who are weaving new stories of a returning goddess. They believe she's back on the planet, alive and well, and she can do a lot for you. We'll also be listening to the stories of a woman who's been called the founding mother of this movement. Shujana Budapest. You know, they say when women gather in circles, the stories they share become the new creation story, the new mythos that guides our times. This is very much what you're talking about. That, is, that, is, that is where the knowledge comes from, not from people who are going and getting a PhD in this, or, or the ones who um, pretend to teach this as, as anything else than another art course, you know. The knowledge truly comes from gatherings, gatherings, and gatherings. And any time women only gather, the paranoia is even bigger because we put the goddess together again. We put the goddess from the dismemberment back into the wholeness, and we learn collectively, and we learn even subliminally. There's another world on the subliminal level where we receive information that nurtures belief systems in us. There's another world on the subliminal level where we receive information that nurtures belief systems in us. There's another world on the subliminal level where we receive information that nurtures belief systems in us.
what is witchcraft? You know, I've got, I tell people I'm interviewing a witch and they go crazy. You know that, don't you? <laughs> they get well, frightened and everything else. Well, we have the stock answer. We have the poetic answer. I give you my answer. I, I, I have sort of like in between, in, the, in between. I feel that a witch is whosoever relates to the earth as a conscious, intelligent being, that everything on top of her is equally conscious and intelligent. All of her stuff can hear you. You can pray to the big one through a blade of grass. When you can touch a stone and, and feel your own age. You make it you know, sound intoxicating. Yeah. Well, to me, to, to me, it's like a heart thing. It's, it, to me, it's not about how many books you read, um, do you know exactly what corner of the universe has to be evoked how, or in which way, what color candles to light for love or, or, or um, uh, money. It's this attitude. I entered feminism as a witch. I was arrested for tarot reading. At that point, my circles were 150, 200 women. Uh, we were very visible and I opened a candle shop because our occult supplies came from East LA and we were on the beach. So I said, it's easier to open a store and stock it here. So we just have to go once. And that's what we did. We opened our own feminist Wicca candle shop, also called as La Bruja Feminista. And we began, began the, um, the study this time earnestly with the stuff that comes with witchcraft. The Dionic tradition is a Central European tradition, which is women's mysteries. In other words, all the rituals that women by themselves take care of is called Dionic. In a Dianic tradition, you don't evoke male gods. That's one of the uh, simple differences from other traditions. You only evoke goddesses. Since there are so many goddesses and goddesses in everything, it's not hard. And it sort of creates a pure female energy circle. Witching Beyonce. Did Queen Bee practice witchcraft on one of her musicians? In this Daily Mail TV exclusive, the drummer who claims she was put under Beyonce's spell is now speaking out. The fact that people keep saying, I'm crazy? Hell, the situations I had to deal with and survive are crazy. Kimberly Thompson says she is tormented from being put under manic sexual spell by Beyonce. We're talking about other situations changing into animals and, and jumping into other bodies, all kinds of really crazy stuff. In bizarre court papers, Thompson claims Beyonce, she refers to as this person, has started a campaign of harassment against her that includes extreme witchcraft, dark magic, and magic spells of sexual molestation. She also claims Beyonce murdered her kitten after the singer put a spell on it. They were like, the cat has a spell on it. The cat was taken back to her people, like, and they killed it. It's unclear why Thompson is speaking out now, even though she says Beyonce has been at it since 2006. She's not been able to let me go. She's not been able to let me progress. She's just been a savage. Senior correspondent Tara Burney joins us now. And Tara, these claims are bizarre. Uh, They're really Beyonce, strange. Has, has Beyonce responded at all to these? Jesse, Beyonce's a little busy. She's on tour <laughs> with Jay Z. They're finishing up in LA, so they have not responded. And as far as Thompson, her request for a temporary restraining order was denied by a judge, most likely because of the nonsensical rantings about witchcraft. So, I I don't know. It's, I don't know it's hard to say. How often judges have to rule on something like this, as yeah. bizarre as this. Uh, what were Thompson's other claims here? There's a lot of them. Um, first, that Beyonce stole money from her. She had her stalked, she had her bullied. Thompson said she had to move several different times to different cities because she was casting spells on her work and her relationships, and she couldn't hold down a job and she couldn't find a boyfriend. Okay, I'm gonna go on a limb here and say there will be no legal repercussion for Beyonce. I at don't all. think so. I don't think she is on her radar. I'm not a lawyer, but I did stay at a holiday in last night. Tara, thank you. <laughs> all right.
yes. No, it's in good health. I mean, for instance, to speak for my country, it is a majority. It's no longer 20 crazy ladies, you know, which is what we were at the beginning, or, you know, regarded as very odd. You know, now all of the fundamental issues of equality, including reproductive issues, are majority issues, and that's true in many, if not most, countries. And we know we are a global movement. We are very connected with each other across boundaries. So how do you critique modern feminism now? Uh, when you look at the, if you like, the newer role models, is Beyonce uh, a good role model yeah, for she's young a fine, white women, yeah, yeah, for yeah. young women? Anybody. She's a fine role model for me. She's, you know, an, an inspiration. It's it's I, it's about supporting each other in what we do best and what our dreams are and uh, how we feel about women as a group. It's not about sitting around and criticizing who is a proper feminist or not. Men lie, women lie, numbers don't. <laughs>